The market makes new highs and the options do not. That's because the smartest money in this instance is selling their options out. And who's buying the options back? Well, it's the people who sold it to them. So probably the bullion banks. Who has been driving this market? Well, there's been buying coming out of China, not just retail, not just central bank. There's been speculative buying from Shanghai that's been spilling over into the US. Futures buying, Shanghai Futures Exchange. China, for the first time, and they're very powerful when they do this, is clamping down. So call it capital controls, call it margin raises, but they are adjusting margin ratios and price limits for some contracts on futures. That's the first thing. The second thing is they're adjusting transaction fees. Gold prices gold. surged to an all-time high last week, breaching the $2,400 mark, showcasing its resilience as a safe haven asset amidst global uncertainties. However, the euphoria was short-lived as events in the Middle East towards the week's end triggered a widespread sell-off across financial markets, casting doubts on gold's reliability in times of geopolitical tensions. Despite the turbulence, gold has been on an impressive ascent since the start of 2024, boasting a remarkable 15% increase. Nevertheless, the market's stability was disrupted by two successive events. First, a disappointing US inflation report sent shockwaves through the market, followed swiftly by escalating tensions in the Middle East. This led to a sharp $100 drop in gold's value within a single trading session. Understandably, this sudden wave of sell-offs left investors pondering whether gold's growth trajectory would persist throughout 2024. Renowned analyst Vince Lancy sheds light on the behavior of the options market, which diverged from gold's rally. Vince's analysis suggests a potential sign of market topping, as the options market failed to follow gold's upward trajectory. This discrepancy indicates that savvy investors may sell their options positions while buy banks are likely repurchasing them. However, Vince cautions against interpreting this as a signal of cheap volatility, urging investors to exercise patience and wait for a market sell-off before considering re-entry. In addition to market dynamics, Vince raises crucial questions about the underlying drivers of the gold market. While China has emerged as a significant buyer of gold, recent regulatory interventions by the Chinese government have introduced uncertainty into the market. Capital controls, margin raises, and future contract adjustments aim to dampen demand and stabilize the market. These measures underscore the intricate interplay between market forces and regulatory interventions in shaping gold's performance amidst evolving geopolitical and economic landscapes. We will present clips from Vince Lancy's interview with Arcadia Economics. But before we do, if you want more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. Gold is making new highs and the options are not making new highs. The second, the bottom line, that's volatility, the top line, that's the market price. That tells you that someone is selling calls as the market rallies. And historically, when this happens, this is very near and dear to my heart. When the market makes new highs and the options do not, that's because the smartest money in this instance is selling their options out. And who's buying the options back? Well, it's the people who sold it to them. So probably the bullion banks. This is a sign of toppiness. You can make the argument that volatility is getting cheap. You might want to buy it again. That's right. I would wait for the market to sell off. That's my opinion. Next point. And this is big. Who has been driving this market? Well, there's been buying coming out of China, not just retail, not just central bank. There's been speculative buying from Shanghai that's been spilling over into the US. Futures buying, Shanghai Futures Exchange. China, for the first time, and they're very powerful when they do this, is clamping down. So call it capital controls, call it margin raises, but they are adjusting margin ratios and price limits for some contracts on futures. That's the first thing. The second thing is they're adjusting transaction fees for gold futures and other contracts. Now, not, not shown here, they've also limited the amount of position that you can have on futures as deliverable against the physical exchange. So Shanghai Gold Exchange, that's the physical exchange. It's like their spot market. That's their London market, if you want to look at it that way. And the futures exchange is their COMEX. And they're keeping them separate physically. And they're also saying you can only accumulate so many futures for delivery on physical. So they're capping it. These are big drivers. They dampen 
Chinese demand. Be careful. All this happened after someone cried uncle. Someone cried uncle. China uh, raised the requirements, uh, uh, reduced cross uh, asset trading, and the market is now, you know, weaker. Okay, uh, even though we had a great uh, a great week last week. There's one other thing. Last week was turning to silver. See this chart? Highest, this is the key for me, highest weekly close for silver in over a decade. I think 11 years. That market should have attracted buying out of the gate, and it did not. So if this market, if these markets, here's my first line in the sand, coming back to that. If this market does not close green on the day, then the macro pliers are no longer buying. Macro players, not pliers, right? Silver should be bought today. And if they're not on a day that they should be in, that's a warning bell. A new high on the weekend silver is needed, again, to attract more buying. A downtick in open interest with lower market, that's a little bit of wonky stuff saying that. I think the macro funds are selling now. The macro funds are selling now. Gold could down at 2291 and you're okay. And below 2291, then you start looking to buy dips. Because nothing has changed fundamentally. Nothing has changed. It's just overdone. We've had it good for a long period of time. The recent resurgence in U.S. inflation has dominated discussions over the past few weeks, particularly regarding its implications for rate cut expectations. At the start of the year, widespread predictions were that the Federal Reserve would implement multiple rate cuts, possibly six or seven. However, these expectations have significantly moderated as inflation has failed to meet the Fed's 2% target. Currently, the market anticipates only one to two rate cuts of 25 basis points each by the end of the year. The moderation in rate cut expectations can be attributed to the recent inflation data and the robustness of the US labor market. Initially, the market adjusted its rate cut projections following positive labor market data However, these expectations were further tempered after the April 10th inflation figures were released. In contrast to the dwindling rate cut forecasts, there has been notable activity among bullion banks such as JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, UBS, Citibank, and Bank of America. These institutions have been raising their targets, signaling optimism and engagement in the market. Vince views these adjustments as responses to prevailing market conditions rather than marketing strategies. Furthermore, Vince observes a shift in market sentiment, particularly regarding long-term investment appetite. He notes a decreasing interest in adding to long positions, suggesting a decline in overall market confidence. War, debt, inflation, and rate, put, rate cut potential are all known quantities, although we know that the rate cut potential has receded recently. Second point, the bullion banks, J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, UBS, Citibank, BOA, all outdid each other, raising targets very similarly to how they do on stocks they play catch up with. This is not; these are not bag holding uh, price target raises. Uh, they raise them at the end of the year. That's marketing, and then they raise them in March after the rally. And I do not believe that was bag holding. I believe that was them playing catch up with a big buyer that. They are, they did not have a handle on. Okay. Uh, number three, every bullion bank, ha oh, I think I just said that, right? Every bullion bank has not only raised their end of year targets, excuse my spelling, but raised their targets again since March, predicated on buying they have no control of nor heads up on if it's coming as to play, as they play catch up to market forces. The editor is going to be fired from this uh, organization. For the last month, you've seen precious metals money coming in hand over fist, right? And energy you saw coming in to cover shorts, but not getting long. Well, this past two-week breakdown from March 13th, actually month breakdown from March 13th to April 12th, you saw, it's a little bit small. Let me see if I can make it bigger for you. That's the wrong way, right? You saw precious metals go from $26 billion dollars to $30 billion. That's a healthy increase. But energy went from $27 billion 
to 36 billion. The allocations between funds are going from metals to energy. So some of the longs are selling in gold and buying in oil. It's not the end of the world, but this is how it happens. Here's another red flag for me, market news. The first story, gold's rise to all-time highs above 2,400 an ounce this year has captivated global markets. Big deal. That's a big deal because it's a Bloomberg story and there's nothing about it that's bearish. Tesla has cut prices by nearly $2,000. That's recessionary. Gold's going to go down in a recession, just not as much as stocks. The Federal Reserve Bank is stuck in a mode of forecasting and public communication that looks increasingly limited. The Fed is telling you they're data dependent and the data sucks. So what's their game plan? You can't be data dependent if the data is untrustworthy. That means you have to have a game plan. Look, if you tell me that you're relying on the data and the data sucks, then I need to know what you're going to do with the data. Because it's it's kind of like I'm looking at the I'm looking at the data and data is doing this. And you're saying I'm data dependent. I'm like, well, well, what are you doing with the data? Like, what can you do with shit? And that's what it is. Gold prices open today's trading with a significant decline breaking key support at $2,325.90. Further bearish correction is expected, with the next target at $2,260.60. Negative pressure from the EMA50 suggests a continued decline, but breaching $2,325.90 could reverse the bullish trend. Where are prices heading next? Do tell us in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video. Subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.